presentation such plebeian surroundings since it's usually found in fancier outfits where it's listed on the menu with the scary annotation market price. But although nowadays lobster is considered a highbrow food, its roots are actually very, very humble. In fact, I truly doubt that the Earl of Sandwich, had he visited our shores in the 1700s, would have requested a sandwich of lobster to sustain him during his long gambling sessions. Because from the moment the Europeans first arrived in New England until the late 1800s, the lobster was considered a trash fish. In the 1600s, lobsters were so abundant, don't take it personally, guy. Lobsters were so abundant in the 1600s that they washed up on the beach in piles two feet high during storms. They were so plentiful and easily had that, like the similarly ubiquitous salmon, everyone got sick of them. When indentured, indentured servants contracted for work, they insisted on a clause restricting their employers from serving them lobster more than once a week. If you're still not getting my drift, consider this. When the early immigrants weren't saying, what, lobster again? They were using lobster for fish bait, livestock feed, and even fertilizer. I'm talking like whole, live, good lobster. So for our first couple of centuries, lobster was the food of the poor. But like so much else, lobster's cachet was subject to the law of supply and demand. Once the bounty began to dwindle, and when, thanks to the railroad, the lobster found new fans across the country, its price and its status climbed. By 1885, people were already complaining, this time not about too much lobster, but about the high price of lobster, which had skyrocketed to 12 cents each. Then that's a price that we lobster lovers today can only dream of. Well, why am I telling you all this? It is my theory that the lobster roll, a very humble preparation, must go back in some form to the days before lobster had moved up the status ladder and found itself in glitzier dishes like Thermidor, Amorican, and Newburgh. Now, this is just a theory, because tracking the origins of the lobster roll is not that different from establishing definitively how and when the hamburger was invented. In other words, nobody really seems to know. A restaurant in uh, Amagansett, Long Island, called the Lobster Roll is believed by some to have created the sandwich in 1966, but people from Maine and Massachusetts, the first lobster lovers, they would argue with that. And besides, I have found recipes for similar lobster sandwiches in much older sources, like the Settlement Cookbook and the Fanny Farmer Cookbook, both of which go back to the turn of the century. These days, of course, as we approach the turn of the next century, lobster sandwiches do tend to reflect lobster's current status on the socioeconomic scale. At fancy new American restaurants across the country, everyone's inventing big deal lobster sandwiches. A super exclusive Upper East Side Manhattan restaurant even got named after one. This one. This is the Lobster Club, which was a famous sandwich invented by Ann Rosenzweig at her restaurant Arcadia. And she opened a second restaurant re recently, and this is on the menu, and she called it, she called the restaurant the Lobster Club. It's a club sandwich. It's got uh, lettuce and tomato and bacon and lobster and mayonnaise. It's, it's, it's really a very nice sandwich. Um, then uh, we have a sandwich here from the uh, Mesa Grill. Um, it's a lobster sandwich with a corn salsa and then cilantro and a red pepper vinaigrette and all the usual characters that you'd expect on a sandwich like this. Um, this is a, a lobster club from the, um, I think they call it a lobster roll actually. Uh, it comes on kind of like a seated hamburger roll at the 21 Club, the August 21 Club in New York. And as you can see, it's got grilled onions on it. It's got some tarragon. It's got uh, tomato and avocado. And it's got very trendy caper berries all around it. Hoo-hoo! I get a nosebleed from such heights. And this one comes from a very interesting restaurant in Boston called Ambrosia. Check out this triple-decker lobster sandwich. I wonder if you can sense the size of this. It's enormous. Um, and let's take a look and see what we've got in here. In addition to lobster, we've got prosciutto and watercress and tomato. And we've got these uh, batons on top here, which you can use as paddles at fish auctions. Yes. Well, listen, these are very interesting, and kudos to the chefs who created them. There's a lot of lobster sandwich activity out there these days. But, you know, they're trying very hard. I don't think you have to try so hard. This is really a different category altogether. What I really like is the New England ro lobster roll. The classic lobster roll is a study in simplicity with nothing highfalutin about it. The problem, as always, is finding a good one. Now, don't be fooled by look-alike pretenders. 
like this monstrosity over here. A lot of so-called lobster rolls today are not really made of lobster at all. Instead, they're made of pseudo-lobster, sometimes called seafood salad or sea legs. You know, the technical name is surimi. You've had this, I'm sure. Actually, they serve it in California rolls at sushi bars all the time. Yuck! Uh, it's made from pollock or some other cheap fish with a little shellfish stock thrown in, salted to a fairly well, and compressed and colored to resemble a lobster tail or a crab or whatever the hell they want to market it as. As you might guess, it tastes nothing like lobster, no matter how you doctor it up. That's a monstrosity to me, lobster roll with surimi. <laughs> now here's another pretender, and I did fool you because I was touting it before as a proper lobster roll, but you know what? It was made with this, this frozen canned lobster meat. <laughs> now it's, um, we don't really want to be doing that, do we? <laughs> so, just what makes a top of the line lobster roll? Well, I'll show its secrets right after this. So stick around. Brought to you in part by Ford, maker of vehicles that are built to last. Last weekend, Beth took her Ford ZX2 out for a little adventure. You know that van is still following us? And she found it. Let's lose them. Yeah. Of course, the ZX2 makes a perfect getaway car. As long as you know who you're getting away from. Oh, well. Hey, she would have hated having a chauffeur anyway. Ford Escort ZX2, built to last. Hey, your kitchen's not as clean as you think. Not all cleaners kill E. coli and salmonella. You never know where they might turn up. Lysol antibacterial kitchen cleaner powers through the toughest grease and disinfects. So do you have our word on it, you can't call it clean. Come to Food Network's Marketplace, your online source for the latest information and tools to cook like your favorite Food Network chefs. Just log on to www.foodtv.com and click here. This month, we're offering David Rosengarten's new cookbook, Taste, featuring more than just recipes. David also shares his unique technique for developing true taste. It's all yours for the price of $31 plus shipping and handling at Food Network's Marketplace, www.foodtv.com. Once there was an adorable prince who loved to frolic and play. But one day he fell under a strange spell. Frolicking was suddenly uncool. To reverse the spell, his parents took him to a most magical place. And it worked. The boy forgot to act cool and had the time of his life with his happy family. Of course, he later broke their hearts by going to college out of state, but that's another tale. Call 1407-W-Disney and make your dream come true. The song of the great whales can be heard for hundreds of miles. It's a beautiful way to communicate long distance. But this one costs 99 cents. Dial 1010-220 and all your long distance calls up to 20 minutes cost only 99 cents. And only 10 cents for each minute over 20. Any day, any time, anywhere within the U.S. and to Canada. No fees, no sign-ups. Just dial 1010-220, then one and the number, and talk up to 20 minutes for only 99 cents. July 5th, Food Network launches its biggest lineup of new shows ever with more new reasons why you'll never look at food the same again. You'll never look at food the same again. Nine new series, new episodes of all your favorites, and specials every week. It all starts July 5th on Food Network. Okay, we're going to make the classic lobster roll. It's very simple. It's great. It's a combination of fresh lobster chunks tossed lightly with mayonnaise, some celery, squeeze of fresh lemon juice, and a grind of fresh pepper, a little salt maybe, all of which is piled high on a buttered, grilled hot dog bun, and a little sprinkling of paprika over the top. Um, now, the perfect lobster roll, absolutely without question, starts with fresh lobster meat 
that you cook yourself. Why not buy cooked lobster meat from the fish market, you're asking? Well, um, you just don't know what kind of condition the lobster was in just before it entered the pearly gates. Could have been on its last legs or its last claws, which means that its meat would have been inferior in both taste and texture. Furthermore, you don't know how long it was cooked. Could have been boiled for an eternity, rendering the meat tough and chewy and flavorless. And you don't know when it was cooked. Uh, it could have been cooked like five days ago and, and wouldn't be at its freshest. So start on your lobster roll by buying live lobsters, okay? And cooking them yourself. And I mean live. I mean alive and kicking. Take a look at my friend Larry here. He's pretty lively. <clears throat> Whoa, nice leap. A leap of faith by Larry. See, this is good. I'm sorry to do this to you, Larry, but you're, you're going to make a very fine lobster roll. You're going to make somebody very happy. Um, at the market, make sure the lobster that the fishmonger is pulling out of the tank is waving wildly. Don't accept any lobsters that seem listless. Okay? Now, you just make sure to keep that in mind. All right, let's go on. Um, for the kind of lobster that you should use, well, first of all, it really should be what's called a Maine lobster or an American lobster, like Larry here, which is distinguished by its large claws. See those guys? They're big. Um, and later, when you taste it by its tender, succulent meat, it's found in northern waters. It's not just from Maine. You know, it goes all down the Atlantic coast. But um, it's, it's very different. By the way, you know, this is a lobster that we have in the north uh, east of the United States. And they also have it in northern Europe. They have it in Norway and they have it around Ireland and, uh, and England. But it's uh, much superior to its spiny, clawless cousin to the south, which they have in the Mediterranean, uh, which has chewier, stringier meat that's not as sweet. And we have lobsters from the Caribbean. Not as good as this Maine lobster or the northeast lobster. Uh, so that's what you want, uh, especially for a New England lobster roll. Once you've found the right variety, does it matter whether you choose a female or a male? Well, there are as many opinions on that subject as there are theories about whether a soft-shell lobster or a molted lobster yields sweeter meat than a very hard-shell lobster, or whether the meat of younger lobsters is more tender than that of older ones. I have found that, you know, some people say that big lobsters aren't as tender. I have found that not to be the case, and I've discussed this with Maine lobstermen, and I find that uh, it, it depends on the lobster itself and how it was treated. I've had tough little ones, and I've had tough big ones, and tender little ones, and tender big ones. I usually try to find a female, actually Larry is a female, <laughs> with an identity crisis. Um, soft, it's, you look right here, there's kind of, it's a little bit wider here, the female is, and also the, has little soft tender flippers here. Larry's getting very interested as I'm touching these little flippers. Um, they are, they're kind of furry and soft. The male has very hard, pointy little flippers here. And that's how you can tell the difference. So this is a female. Um, all right, now we're going to talk about cooking the lobster. Put up a big pot of water. I like to salt it so it tastes as salty as seawater. Um, and uh, make sure that it's boiling away wildly. The lobster should be flailing and the water should be flailing. And then what you want to do make sure that it's boiling is take the lobster put it in the boiling water cover it immediately that will make it easiest for the lobster to give up the ghost uh, because um, the boiling water will kill it almost instantly but you know what I don't like to boil lobster because I think it makes the meat tougher so what I do after I have put the lobster in is I turn the the water down and uh, I like to just simmer it and a lobster that's about um, pound and a half will take something like 10 minutes to cook. Um, alrighty, so let's say that we've done all that. Larry, I'm going to spare you for the moment. <clears throat> you can come back another day. Um, so when you've done all that, uh, you finish the lobster, let it cool, then you've got your lobster meat. And here's a nice collection of very elegant lobster meat that we have. <clears throat> Um, so let's see, let's take this and start to cut this into chunks. And I like to cut the lobster meat into coarse chunks. Just about like that. Oh, that's a little too coarse right there. But you know, it, it gives it a really nice feeling of bounty in the lobster roll when it's cut into pretty coarse chunks. And uh, use, of course, you'll be using all your meat, so you use a collection, a combination of tail meat and claw meat. Go, so nice chunk right there. I want to get about two cups of lobster meat, which is about a pound of lobster meat. And uh, by my calculations, you will get this out of two lobsters, each one uh, weighing about 
let's say, um, two pounds. That should give you two cups of lobster meat weighing, a, well, actually, it's about maybe about two, two and a quarter pound lobsters. Should give you about a pound of lobster meat, which should be about two cups. Let me just measure in my two cups here. That's just about right. I'm going to put a little bit of claw meat in here. Okay. There's about two cups of lobster meat. Put that in there. Now to this, um, you're going to add some mayonnaise, of course. Well, you take your pick on mayonnaise. You can make your own mayonnaise. Um, there are certain uh, store brands that um, I prefer not to use. Uh, there's one sort of boutique brand from Ojai, California called Lemonaise, which is actually quite a good product and is very good in the lobster roll, the Lemonaise. But good as that is and boutique-y as that is, my favorite actually is to use Hellman's. You know, it's, Hellman's is the one sort of mass market product that foodies get misty about. <laughs> foodies say, yeah, I couldn't, I couldn't do without Hellman's. <clears throat> so you want to put about a quarter cup of mayonnaise in there. I'm just going to eyeball this for you. That was about two tablespoons. Do a little more. It would be about four tablespoons altogether for this quantity. Okay. And uh, you need about a quarter cup of celery as well. Now you see, uh, celery that I'm using, I'm cutting into pretty big chunks. Uh, make sure it's clean. I call it the size of gambling dice or thereabouts. Okay, I've got some that I've cut over here. One about a quarter cup. This is not one of those sort of like fine salads where everything's cut into fine chunks. Everything is a pretty big, generous chunk in this. It's part of the nature of this salad. Now, I find usually that at this point, it's a little bit tight. Actually, I want a little squeeze of lemon juice in here. Good. And I like to put a little bit of water in just to loosen it a little bit. Can actually loosen it a little bit more. Season it with salt and pepper, of course. Salt, pepper. And now we're going to talk about the bun, the hot dog bun. Now you've got several choices. This, of course, is your standard hot dog bun right here. Um, you've got, uh, this, is, this has become popular lately. These are potato rolls, potato buns. That's possible, so it's a little bit sweeter. I'm not as fond of that. Um, people do it sometimes on this, but I say, no, go for a hot dog roll. Really go for a hot dog bun. This is the way to do it. And then what's most classic in New England is the hot dog bun that's split down the middle rather than on the side. And this is your classic uh, New England lobster roll bun, so I'm going to use this. And what you want to do is get a hot cast iron pan and uh, brush this thing with butter, you can be generous, on the sides, just like this, okay? And then put it in the pan and put a weight on it. And it toasts it very quickly and very nicely. Let me show this to you. Oh, a little bit further, a little bit more. Really should take no more than maybe 30 seconds on a side. Uh huh. You see that? And then about 30 seconds on the other side. Uh huh. Very nice. You see that golden toast kind of thing? And now, what you want to do is fill this with the lobster meat. Just like this. And make it generous. This quantity will make about four lobster rolls. Just like that. Too much celery right there. Put one more piece of lobster right on top of it. Oh, beautiful. On the plate. And a little sprinkling of very good sweet paprika. My friends, you have got a New England lobster roll. Come back in a moment. I'll show you how it looks at the table. soft, barely there underwear, nothing feels better. Kitchen aid for the way it cleans up what life dishes out, the way it leaves you without a doubt. 
Dishwasher for the way it looks and the way you live. For the number one selling premium dishwashers. Kitchen aid for the way it's made. For 50 years. We're all looking for stories with happy endings. Like Brandon. And Lori. Catherine. Women that have run their own race against breast cancer. Now they're running with thousands of others in Race for the Cure events to raise awareness and money for breast cancer education and research. That's why Ford Division supports Race for the Cure. Because of all the racing we do, this is one race that has to be won. Yes! Yes, yes! Yes, it's new Herbal Essences Facial Care. Yes! Yes, a surprisingly gentle way to get glorious skin. And yes, a totally organic experience for your face. Hmm, what's new from Kraft? Make a meal with what's on hand. Let's see, I've got chicken, rice, and cheese. Wow, look at all these recipes. And in no time, gotta tell my sister, craftfoods.com, home clicked meals. 65 years. For the first time on TV. Don't they go by in a blink? Meet Joe Black on pay-per-view. Your dad, I wish to see the world. You like him, don't you? I love him. Brad Pitt. I have this big feeling in my knee. Anthony Hopkins. You're at the wrong place at the wrong time with the wrong woman. Claire Forlani. I'm in love with a man, but I don't know who he is. Meet Joe Black. Easy to see at home on pay-per-view. When I was growing up, I watched Honolulu change from a sleepy tropical town into a major American city. During that time, Star Markets has been growing and changing too. Today we serve the residents and visitors of our islands in many ways, with new products and innovative services at everyday low prices. With the five-star experience of Star Markets, we've helped make Hawaii a better place. Lobster rolls, you gotta love it. Now, uh, believe it or not, I don't think that this is classic beach food. You know why? Because if it's beach food, that means you gotta make it at home and bring it to the beach. And uh, one thing that I love about this dish is that toasty, warm, buttery hot dog bun hitting the cold lobster roll. I didn't tell you that, but I would take that, make sure that that lobster mixture that goes inside the bun stays very cold. Keep it in the refrigerator. Keep the meat in before you make it, keep it in after you make it, and then put it on a hot bun. And that contrast is just absolutely fabulous. Serve it with some chips, very informal. Don't let me catch you wearing a jacket when you're serving this dish. Um, it's actually kind of fun to choose a wine to go with this dish um, because there are now some very nice wines being made in New England. Let me show you one. There's a winery in uh, Rhode Island called Sakonet. And this is them right here, Sakonet. They're making a wine called Vidal Blanc, which is a New York State hybrid grape, but is based on the Italian grape Trebbiano, one of the great, the great white grape of, uh, of Italy. And I want you to take a look at what it happens to say on this label. See that down at the bottom there? Finishing with a dry crispness that enhances any seafood of coastal New England. <laughs> and it really does work very, very nicely with this. Um, I like a wine that is low in alcohol to go with lobster, very good acidity, and it can be just a little touch sweet. I mean, I'm not talking sweet, but just a little slight perception of sweetness. Balances nicely with the sweet nature of lobster meat. Um, by the way, we said before that, um, that uh, the east part of uh, Long Island is kind of an honorary outpost of New England these days, or any days. Um, there's a winery on Long Island now, on the North Fork of Long Island, called uh, Palmanuck, uh, which is the old um, Native American word for Long Island. And they make something quite unusual, a Chenin Blanc, which is a great white grape from the Loire Valley in France, and they make it in a very crisp, almost completely dry style, but once again, just a little hint of sweetness to it. Let me show you what it looks like when a happy man puts a lobster roll on his face. Mm. Man! <laughs> I love it. See you again. Life's a matter of taste. Bye-bye. <laughs> 
If you would like a copy of the recipes you've just seen, please send us a check for $4 shipping and handling to Food Network, P.O. Box 9300, Central Islip, New York, 11722. That address again is Food Network, P.O. Box 9300, Central Islip, New York, 11722. You can also get the recipes for free when you visit our website at foodtv.com or AOL keyword food. You can catch Food Network's spiciest chef, Emeril Lagasse, as he kicks it up a notch every night at 9. But July 5th, he's moving to 8. So don't miss him every night at 9 now and starting July 5th, every night at 8, only on Food Network.